Welcome back and today we're going to take a look at the long-awaited the Civivi Vision FG. Uh, the reason why this one was so anticipated is because the original Vision came in at $269. So with this one, a more budget-friendly version with you know some more budget in uh, materials, you are getting it for $191 cheaper, coming in at $78.20 for this variation. Uh, there are other variations if you don't want a blacked out blade. They have a Damascus blade. They have a non-coated blade, uh, micarta, several options like they always do. So we're going to talk about this one right now, and then we're going to discuss the main differences between these two. This is a Snex design. He is an outstanding knife designer. Just remarkable stuff that he puts out. Very, very detail-oriented in his designs and very, very symmetrical designs. This is a full-size EDC knife coming in at around 7.95 inches long and it has about a 3.54 inch blade. They're calling it a worn cliff on some of the sites. I'd call it a reverse tanto or a modified drop point. You can call it whatever you want. I don't really care. <laughs> of a Nitro V stainless steel. Um, and so if he does a good job with theirs, uh, usually holds a respectable edge and it's highly corrosion resistant and it's a super tough steel also. There's no jimping up top, but I didn't find the need for it because you got a nice flat spot to rest your finger. Um, you have a very pokey pokey tip up there. Great for doing fine precision cutting, utility cuts. And that's where this knife's probably going to shine. You have a nice forward finger choil that I can get my finger up on rather easily to get right up on that edge. If you had fat sausage fingers, it may not fit there. You might have to do the trigger pull right here. You have dual thumb studs. And this one has a high flat grind that comes down to around 16 thousandths behind the edge. Let's see how it cuts. The knife came with a pretty good edge out of the box. It wasn't great, or at least not the entire edge. And that's something I've seen a lot with uh, Civivi. So if you notice your knife not performing that great, just give it a good sharpening. And usually you'll double your performance almost with uh, pretty much any Civivi. Um, it's, you know, pretty, pretty good up there toward the tip is a lot sharper than the back portion for some reason. And here we're going to test the ergos on this piece of birch. And you're going to see me swap, try to swap my grip up several times because uh, there were two problems. When I choked up, the uh, lock sticks up a little high. And when I'm pushing down, it is pushing into the palm of my hand, making it pretty darn uncomfortable. Then when I choke back to try to avoid that, I am uh, coming in contact with that clip because it's all the way on top of those scales. So it, it wasn't unbearable and you could definitely get the job done. But if this is something you plan on doing a lot of, you might want to steer clear. Now, this is where it's going to shine. Doing those drag cuts, fine, precise, precision cutting with that tip. Uh, you got uh, the way the, the blade cants up. It goes up at an angle and you got a pretty almost straight edge to it. Uh, you can do pretty much all the type of cutting on a flat cutting surface without a problem uh, and it performed very well. Um, I felt like I had a lot of power whenever I was cutting, especially when I was pushing down on stuff, uh, which is not always the case with some knives. Now this is where I kind of felt the bite behind that tip wasn't the best. It started struggling toward the end of the denim. Um, so um, I was hoping that the, the tip would be a little sharper and we'll find out in just a second. But yeah, I definitely struggled right around this area. I was really pushing down harder. Now we move to the half inch thistle rope and this is where I was kind of like, wow, that right out the tip is, is very, very sharp and it has some toothiness to it. And I'm doing mainly push cutting. And it was very easy <laughs> to do this with the pinch grip, just the way that blade angles like that. It was very nice. Uh, even though it was nice and sharp there by the tip, I guarantee you after the first sharpening, it would perform you know, leaps and bounds better than it did today. 
So that's just something to be aware of. Now I've had some Civis that came wicked sharp. They just have a problem sometimes of over polishing the edge and that just takes away any kind of bite you have to the edge. It can be sharp, you know, with like cardboard cutting and stuff like that. But when you need that toothiness and aggression to where it grabs onto the fibrous materials, you, it's, you don't want that type of edge because it's going to skate off of what you're cutting. But I made 41 cuts and I'm happy with that. Now let's take a look at the deployment and the action, and that's the first difference between these two. The Vision FG has dual thumb studs, and this one has a blade hole. Uh, this one is good for the thumb flick. That's, you know, a very, very good way to flick it. You can also reverse flick it rather easily, slow roll it easy, and you can also pull this back and open it up as well. You know, pretty much the same things with this one. This one's just uh, excellent at the reverse flick for sure. But you can do all the all the opening methods also on this one. Just the easier to do the reverse flake on this particular one. It is riding on ceramic bearings, so as soon as you release that lock, this thing is a guillotine. Super smooth, and uh, it, it has a nice detent that sucks it back in, kind of like an axis lock. Once you get to this point right there, it sucks it back. So really nice. I also noticed that the grinds on these two are a little bit different. This one has, this one goes up quicker and hopefully you can see that you have like two little spots right there. It's just a different looking, not crazy different, but uh, it is different. And even though this one's lower, they are about the same thickness behind the edge. So they, they slice about the same. Something that I, I talked about a little bit during the cutting that I noticed whenever I was choked up like this, if you're planning on doing some hard cutting down, there's two things I can feel. I feel the top of this clip right here being that it's all the way to the top and I feel this uh, jimped area when pushing down. Just when I started pushing down hard, it wasn't unbearable, but I could definitely tell it was there. And if I choke back right here, then that that uh, clip right there is, is catching my palm pretty bad. So, you know, if you do it, if you're going to be doing a lot of hard push down cutting, you know, it might bother you and it just might not be the knife for you. But, you know, just day to day EDC tasks for most people is going to be perfectly fine. Well, I decided to see if the milled uh, Civivi clips work. You can see it's kind of bowed up a little bit because of how deep that is uh, cut out right there. Uh, so it's a little tight in the pocket, but it does solve the issue with the minor hot spot getting the ham whenever I'm squeezing hard. So, you know, it depends on the trade-off you're wanting. And if you want to do this and make it not so uh, tight right here, you could cut off the, the bottom piece of the part of the clip that goes right there and stack it on top of that. Uh, I don't know how good it would look, but, you know. I don't think that looks that bad. It kind of blends in and there's not much, uh, there's really, I mean, no, no side to side unless I'm really cranking down on it. I got them pretty tight in there. Another big difference between these two is the pocket clip. And I know that's something that a lot of people hated about this knife, how it has this side pocket clip. It is awkward. I'll be honest. I don't love that clip. Um, and they swapped it over here and you got a reversible deep carry clip that's on the side. Now it is high up here. Um, I would have much rather it in the middle, but you know, at least we got it off the side right here. But you know, that did become somewhat of a hot spot. Construction on this one's T8 throughout and uh, T6 on the pocket clip. I don't mind that. Um, and this is this one has stainless hardware. This one has titanium hardware. Another difference between the two, of course, some materials you got G10 over stainless steel liners, and then this one you just have uh, titanium. Also, the thickness there's a pretty big thickness difference. Let's see if you can see that. Hopefully, you can see that. It's hard. I don't know how to show that. <laughs> There is a there is a pretty big difference in thickness. You can feel it in the hand. Now the thickness fills out the hand better, but like I said, I think that's you know partly the reason why I'm catching that pocket clip. And since you got thicker scales and stainless scales, it should be a little bit heavier. It feels heavier. 4.37 ounces, not terrible. And this one's coming in at 3.64 ounces, so a good bit lighter. Now for some size comparisons, we have the Civivi Elementum button lock and the Civivi Catch It, I think it is. Excellent size references here. Ontario Rat 1 and 2. 
And last, we have the Sencut Watuga and the Kaiser Domen. The Watuga is almost identical in overall length. All right, now we'll move on to the lock. And this is what's most unique about the knife. Uh, it has his super lock. And it's kind of, it works similar to a uh, shark lock. And you can see in this little hole right there, this is under spring tension. That way, when you open it, it goes into a channel on the blade. Um, and it, it's, you know, smushed in between there and it's got a stop pin. So it's a pretty darn strong lock. Um, he's done some, some severe testing with it and it, it's done great. They did the same thing here for the most part. You can even see the little window and you can see it in there. They added some texture right here and, uh, and at that tip, which makes it way better and grippier to uh, catch that lock. That's one of my complaints here is that this doesn't have any jimping and it's kind of slick and it's a little bit uncomfortable after a while to disengage that lock. This one grabs the finger a lot better and uh, makes it feel better on your fingers as well. Now this is another difference. He designed the super lock to where you could uh, maintain the lock you know, in the field if you needed to. If you got something stuck in there and it wasn't locking up for some reason, this one, you just pull the lock back and pull it out of the channel and you can clean all, clean this off, you know, put a Q-tip in there, clean out the whatever you have in there, blow it out with some compressed air and then push that back in, back underneath there and you're totally locked up again, ready to go. Now this one, uh, since it's a mass produced version, you know, this one's more for enthusiasts and they don't want to get this into somebody's hands and, and that happened and they think the knife's broke. Uh, so what they did was, is they added a pin right here. So when you go to lift this up, it stops right there. Now, if you want it to be just like this, which I'm going to do it right now, I'm going to show you how to do that. The designer showed this on his, uh, Instagram. So... I'm just showing what he showed. So he said, in the closed position, uh, loosen your pivot a half turn. Okay. And then flip it over and you're going to, you're going to loosen this screw. And then before you completely take that screw out, open the blade. Take the screw out. You need a Torx T8 to do that. Then pop the scale. And you're going to be removing that pin right there. Move that out of the way. And as you can see, taking that pin out, move that pin, pop that back together. Slide this back down. Very easy to maintenance this knife. So tighten this back down. Tighten this back down. No play. I might have over tightened it. Yeah, I over tightened it. <laughs> That's another difference. I can tighten that one all the way down. And, uh,. No problem. Go ahead, a little bit of play. No play. <laughs> very, very smooth. And as you can see, you can now pull this out and service it. It's got a little spring right there. So you want to be careful not to pull it up too high and let that spring come flying out. But you can pull it out, do what you need to do, and pop that back in there. And you'll get used to uh, you basically just pulling it back instead of pulling it up. And you'll get used to that. Now, of course, if that's something that doesn't bother you at all, then don't mess with it. The only other big difference that I can think of right now is the blade steel. This one's in CPM 20 CV. This one's in Nitro V. Both excellent steels. So now for my nitpicks and complaints, uh, I would love them to not polish these edges as much as they do. Um, it's just better for cutting, you know, all materials when you got that bite to it instead of having that over polished edge. Um, and these are just nitpicks because, you know, I don't do as much of this type of cutting that, that deep bearing down. And if I do, I could put on a glove, but 
like I said, this was a little uncomfortable, and being that the pocket clip is up here, that top of that pocket clip, whenever I'm really pushing into something, I could feel it in the palm of my hand. Other than that, uh, I think it's a super cool knife. It's very unique, different, cool locking mechanism, very fidgety if you like that kind of thing. Um, and I think the price is excellent. I think I'll probably buy me one of the micarta versions just because I like the feel of that one better. And I'll tell you what, the, lately their Damascus has been looking so good and their Damascus is, is good stuff. It's I think it's their 9CR and they do a great job with it. It performs well and it just looks so good. The one that's in Damascus with this one, I think it has like white G10 and it looks amazing even though i wouldn't buy it because of the white g10 unless i plan on dying it because <laughs> white g10 picks up dirt super easily so do i recommend it highly if you've been wanting this knife but uh couldn't afford you know didn't want to drop the money on this more expensive one totally understand uh you'll get the same enjoyment out of the budget one so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.